Hey guys, it's Kelly Powers. Kind of a windy day out here, but I wanted to start doing some outside videos again. So I'm down here close to an area where I currently live, a little lake area, so I'm using a microphone. First time using a microphone outside, yeah. You ever have these conversations when you're talking to, say, Jehovah's Witnesses, and, and maybe you're talking to them many times, you know, over and over and over and over. And it feels like you're just not getting anywhere, right? It feels like, you know, you're sharing, you, you know, you're doing it in love, you're doing it in grace, you're praying for these people, you're showing them, you know, even, even if you know how to use the New World Translation, how to use their translation to demonstrate either things on the deity of Christ, that Jesus is God, things on the Trinity, um, be able to refute certain things about their teachings, whether soul sleep or other issues, whatever it may be, right? You know, I've been talking to this Jehovah's Witness guy lately, off and on for a while, um, online at times, and also through Facebook and other things like that. And, you know, if he comes across this video, again, no disrespect to this particular person. I won't mention uh, who this person would be. But I've been having these conversations for a while now. And, and I really like this person. He seems like a nice person, nice guy, and seems to be, you know, into these kind of discussions and really into wanting to dig things, you know, get into it, right? But it's like he's missing the elephant in the room. And what do I mean by that? Well, we've been talking a lot about Jesus. Is he created or not? I mean, that's, isn't that pretty much, you know, one of the big topics that happens all the time? You know, a high percent of the time when talking to Jehovah's Witnesses is the issue of, is Jesus God? Is he created? You know, is he Michael the Archangel? Is he a created? Whatever it may be. Like, these are conversations, right, we come up with, right? So, been talking with him a lot, and I've had this kind of chat with many Jehovah's Witnesses. This is a, I think this is probably like, this is always the go-to verse. If you're, if you're familiar with talking to Jehovah's Witnesses, whether you've done it, you know, like, on the streets, you know, handing out tracks, them knocking on your door, um, whether you do it online, whatever, right? Um, what is always like predominantly the go-to verse? What's the go-to verse for Jehovah's Witnesses to teach that Jesus is created? Think about it for a second. I'll give you. I'll give you more. Now, many of you who know this immediately, bing, 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 you know what verse pops up, right? There's a go-to verse that they want to show that Jesus is created. Which is it? That's right. Good job. Colossians 1.15. Give yourself a pat on the back. Boom, boom, right? You did it. Colossians 1.15 says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, right? Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses take this verse to mean firstborn must mean he's the first to be created, right? Prototokos, right? Now, the ironic thing is, yes, a lot of times in the Old Testament and even the New Testament when the word firstborn is being used, it is reference to like someone who is a firstborn of a family, like a firstborn of a child, you know, whether it be male or female, the firstborn to be born, right? Now, that's a, a given in regards to most of its meaning, but it's not always the case, you know, when it comes especially the Old Testament, when it say for Israel, for example, God called Israel in Exodus 4.22. His firstborn, God, Israel is God's firstborn. Israel became his people, but they weren't created out of nothing right there. They were already a people. It was Israel, actually, which was known as Jacob, right? And it was through his lineage that God now has chosen to use this particular, you know, nation or group of people known as now Israelites, right? Now you've got to also say King David. King David, he was the eighth of, you know, he had seven older brothers, so he was, you know, definitely not the firstborn biologically. But yet the Bible says that he's called God's firstborn. And if you even read in that context of Psalm 89, why is he called God's firstborn? Because he has preeminence of authority as being a king. Yet he wasn't the first king to be, you know, come into existence. Either neither was Israel. God actually called earlier on, you know, after Adam and Eve fell, then he called Noah, then he called Abraham, then he eventually called Moses and all this. He called multiple people but he chose to go through the lineage of Jacob, now known as Israel, to bring that line, right? Same thing with David. He used him in a very unique, preeminent kind of way. What about Ephraim? You know the story of the Old Testament, most likely anyway. Genesis 41. Ephraim is born of uh, Joseph and Asana, right? 
uh, he had an older brother named Manasseh. Well, according to Jeremiah 31, verse 9, Ephraim is called God's firstborn, and he uses Ephraim in this special, unique way. Here's the point. That's, a, that, that's enough just to have a demonstration of the Old Testament, how the word firstborn can be understood without it happen to mean literally all the time. Even if you go to, say, like, you know, Jewish type of sources, and they'll talk about firstborn having, like, two type of meanings. One being biological, how you, you know, come out of your mother's loins and how that all comes in procreation. But then the second one is also in regards to this rank or authority, one who is given the special kind of place. So firstborn of itself does not mean, even in the Jewish culture, first of everything in regards to, like, say, a time of coming into existence, right? Same thing in the New Testament. Often enough, when you're reading the New Testament, right, firstborn a lot of times will have a reference to, say, a child or one who is born biologically that way. But when it comes to Jesus, this is the interesting thing, if you're still listening. In Colossians, when Jesus is called the firstborn of all of creation, what happens right after that? Verse 16 and 17, it says, For by him all things have been created whether through him or for him, invisible and invisible, principalities, authorities, all things have been created by him and for him, and he is before all things. And even verse 18 says that he is the firstborn from the dead, that he might have preeminence in all things. So why is Jesus called the firstborn in this context? Does it have anything to do with him being the first to be created? No. Here's the ironic thing, because this is the, this is the meaning that is always forced by the Jehovah's Witnesses, what they've been taught from the Watchtower. Most of their publications, articles, magazines, you read this and that. The ironic thing, though, is, is not long ago, they have a what's called the 2013, you can even go to jw.org. I have this posted on my channel as well. I've shown this before. It's nothing new. They have a study edition where you can go to, like, you know, it's called the study edition. You can go to it, and they have, like, little notes here and there throughout their different books of the Bible, right? And you go to Colossians 1.15, of course, and they're trying, they, they've got their stuff to try to prove that Jesus is created. Don't get me wrong. But they made a huge boo-boo. I mean, a massive boo-boo. And it's still there. You may be asking, what's that boo-boo? If you don't know it, well, let me tell you. So in verse 16, they have this little note here about word other. Because you guys know, if you watch, you know, or you study, kind of study and see my videos, but you've also studied yourself, the word other is inserted four times four times in the New World Translation. And it goes all the way back to 1950. From 1950 all the way on up until roughly 2013, the word other is enforced four times, and it's always been embraced with brackets, pretty much. I think there might have been a few years before the 2013 that this actually did happen. But officially, 2013 is their current edition. And what's interesting, prior to that, they had the word firstborn four times with brackets. What does that mean? Brackets means they at least acknowledge that the word other was not there, okay? Just like with us, when we read our Bibles, a lot of times it'll have italicized words, different places with Old, New Test Old or New Testament. We know that's not literally in the text, right? Even if, especially if we read in a literal translation, whether it be King James, New King James, New American Standard, or something like that, right? Not, not a paraphrased translation or thought, thought like NIV or NLT or Contemporary English or Living Bible or many of the other ones. A lot of times they'll add stuff in to try to help the flow or something of a context. And we understand that. Same thing a lot of times with literal translation. Sometimes there'll be some words that are added there in regards to italicized. Just kind of help the flow of a sentence. We recognize that, that does not mean it's literally a part of the actual Greek, uh, Greek manuscripts or even the Old Testament, right? So we recognize that. And typically, when you read all these places, the words that are added, right, in regards to italicized, they never change the context of a meaning. Why is that significant? Well, a lot of times, there are many verses that the New World Translation has altered. They've changed certain things, and they've also added words to change the context. One example is this one right here, Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Four times they add the word other, and it changes the context. And I've had, in, the com in previous years, times past talking to many different Jehovah's Witnesses, they've told me, Kelly, adding the word other there does not change the context, right? It doesn't change the context. At all. That, that's what witnesses have been telling me for years, right? Up until about this last year or so, about a year ago, I just happened to glance, was doing some research. So this is, you know, I didn't know about this before. So I'm, you know, trying to educate people, right? 
Well, the New World Translation State Edition of 2013, in their little footnote, they say this in regards to Colossians 1.16. They say that the word other is not there in the Greek. Okay? They say go compare their kingdom and Alina translation, which you can also go to their website, jw.lord's there, right? And you can read the literal Greek of what they would say. And why is that important? Because they say, well, if you go compare it, the word other's not there. And here's what here's the kicker. You guys ready? This is the kicker. This is the whole this is the whole enchilada right here. The big kahuna, right? Everything. The watchtower openly admits and says, by having the word other not there. In other words, if you just let the text speak for itself as it's supposed to be, as it's supposed to be, okay? The word other not there, the reader, listen, 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 the reader will get the impression that Jesus is not created, but the creator. Let me say it again. The reader will get the impression that Jesus is not created, but in fact, he is the creator of all things. Why? Because Colossians 16 says, for by him all things have been created. So therefore, what does that do? Based on that right there, that tells us they have a flawed and a biased view of the text. Because if the word other is not there, they have to admit that Jesus is not created and the creator, and that would change their meaning their interpretation of Colossians 1.15 on the word firstborn. But they have to have the word other there in order to justify their interpretation. Are you with me on this? Right? So now how do you deal with that? What do you do? Well, what I've been trying to do, plant seeds. Show them love. Show them grace. Pray for them. Right? And keep pointing out, look, the text says, for by him, meaning Jesus, all things created. That excludes Jesus, number one. Number two, others not there. And the watchtower openly admits this. And the watchtower, this is what I've been sharing lately. The watchtower openly admits, if the word others not there, that means Jesus is created. Sorry. That means Jesus is the, is the creator, sorry, not the created. How about that? Do you get that? The watchtower open limit. So they have to have that there to justify their meaning of firstborn. Because they openly admit, if that's not there, what does it do? It gives the reader, that we you, anybody, the thought, the meaning that Jesus actually is the creator. Now, here's the great thing. John 1, 3 has not been butchered, has not been changed in the New World Translation. I love John 1, 3 in the New World Translation. It says, for by him, nothing came into existence without him. Nothing. That's still in John 1, 3 of the New World Translation. So you can share still that there. But what does the Bible say? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. John, or Genesis 1, 1. For Isaiah 44, 24 says, Jehovah God, I alone created all things. Isaiah 48, 12. Yahweh alone. John 1, 1. John 1, 3. By him all things have been created, and nothing came into existence without him. How about that? So, in conclusion here, what would I like to say? Especially if you're a Jehovah Witness listening. First off, Jehovah Witness, let me tell you, I care for you. I want you to know the biblical Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus that you've been taught from the Watchtower, they've altered the Bible, they've intentionally are misleading people by knowing that adding these kind of words changes the context, right? So I want to encourage you, dig deeper. Dig deeper. Look at some of these things. Dig into the kingdom of linear. Do what I said. Check it out. Do what they said. Check it out. And if you remember, if you look at your preface, if you actually have a physical copy, I do, of the 1969, if you flip through the pages and go right to it, on page 5, what does it say right up front? It says, you want to know the accuracy of any modern translation. What do you do? You compare it with the kingdom and the linear. So you need to compare your New World translation more with the kingdom and the linear. And I bet you, do, you know what will happen? You'll realize that the watchtower is misleading you. And this happens in many other verses. Well, listen, hey, if you're a Christian, let me encourage you. 
Pray. Pray for your Jehovah's Witness friends. Love them. Make the most of your opportunities. Even sometimes it feels like you're going nowhere. Just keep planting those seeds. Keep praying for them. Show them love. Show them grace. Make the most of your opportunities you got. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe. Please like this video. Appreciate those out there who check out the channel. Appreciate you leaving comments. Lord bless you. And may you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.